So um, yes, then we were painting a location of butterflies by Auredon, a French painter. Um, he'd, he'd do this, um, his style you could can call kind of symbolism, um, realism, yeah. Um, so, and he would even paint more or less when, when also there the were impressionist times. And, and if you study his paintings online, you can see that it's basically he has black period and then colorful period. Yeah. And it's also, of course, very interesting to watch this. They're very different. Um, I'll, I'll talk about more about him while we paint. Yeah. But let's let's start slowly. So Orange color, of course, is the main one we are using today. Um, I will be mixing red and yellow to get the orange. Then you can finally use your sienna and ochre. Yes, these colors that are usually always left aside, not used much. So today it's, it's the time. Um, I have gold color. Um, I always advise, you know, if you're buying some extra paints, it's very nice. It, when the painting is dry, it kind of also makes shiny um, effect. I really like it. And it's a bit like, let's say, ochre, but um, it goes somewhat transparent, somewhat gold. Very nice. I, I enjoy this paint a lot. Brown, yes, we have dark pirates. And then, you know, whatever you see on butterflies, some blue, some green, yes, some black dots, some pink. So then the nipple is yellow, yes, but we will get it. Yeah, so the color set up. And we're starting with a sketch. So I'm sketching with the um, the black marker, yes, so you can see it on camera, but you go, of course, with simple pencil. Um, well, we actually, yes, the, uh, the sketch shouldn't be hard. We have, I think, 13 butterflies. Also, feel free to uh, improvise and let's say, you know, have your own butterfly, change something because copying of yeah, um, famous artwork doesn't mean you have to go precise. It means you just study it, see what techniques the painter was using, but you are also free and you know to experiment. So let's start, let's say this big butterfly here. Yes, it's kind of not really um, at the bottom, but it's a good butterfly to start then we can kind of move along with our composition. Yes. And yes, and no worries about the shape of butterflies because really the main is the kind of these colors, yes, about the painting. So here on top, there is another butterfly with this kind of greenish body and then Yes. So also watch to have them different size. Yes, our brains and hand tend to kind of draw things the same. So this is also kind of just, yeah, so we can kind of, here is another one, just maybe you can also, once you did this big butterfly, you can move on top and let's say plan the top butterflies. So like this, you avoid, you know, missing uh, space. So let's say if I go on top and then no paper left. Um, so then I can. Genia? Yes. Um, maybe it's a stupid question, but when you see those like um, butterflies, which are not facing forward, Mm -hmm. Like the one that you drew here, the third one, what is it? Is it like side view or just to understand what, what it is? 
like uh, which exactly which one you mean this one or your on your sketch so if you go one two three the third yes this one from the side or yes well that's that's the way um i don't know if do you have the original i can drop in the chat i don't know the, the original no, it's just to know what I should draw because I don't even know what that is. Well, I draw the same what I see. I see this black spot as the body, and I see this one kind of half, you know, just one. Um, the wing. Exactly, yes. So as if it's kind of flying. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll drop quick. But I think I, I was sending, yes, the, the original painting. So, yeah. Um, when we start painting, you will see that a lot of wings, they are getting inside the background. Uh, and this is kind of very nice effect. So it's not, because um, first when, when we will start painting, we will have butterflies kind of cut it out of the background, but to have this nice, you know, effect the way it looks uh, at his painting, we will have kind of to blend in. Um, yeah, so this is right. Yes. And so this in the middle with this white, of course, is effective. Yeah, so, of course, some butterflies are the ones where our eyes yeah are looking more and the others are let's say more hidden faded so here is a thick yeah so it's like this when when you see something and you're not sure you can either interpret you know or you just copy, okay, there is the, the spot, the dot, and yeah, so it's kind of depends what your aims are. If you're copying, yeah, trying to make it as a, a copy of original, or it's more like your feelings. So two blue butterflies here at the bottom. So one is also kind of this dark body and then the wing goes up and then some circle there. And and there on the painting, there are also kind of two I see them as two flowers, like two white fluffy. Um, yeah, so they're here on this left side, one a bit smaller, one a bit bigger, with this black kind of a line uh, you know, inside. And here is also some spot, let's say, I don't know if it's a small butterfly or. Huh? And yeah, so no worries a lot about details inside the butterflies. I mean, if you are quick, you can sketch some, but um, uh, later with the paints, it's also fine. What else would be nice to sketch are these um, black, black spots. Yes, so it's kind of just for your brains because once we started coloring then sometimes you tend to um, you know get lost so it's a little bit like this pre-planning helps your brain and then later you will follow so i'm just lightly with the with the pencil just sketch maybe where these black parts will be yes if you want you can also kind of so like I colored a bit, so a little bit with a pencil if you want, because since they are brown, it will be no problem. Um, you know, the paint will cover the, the pencil, yeah, but 
it's also like a little bit pre-planning of and of course you know, it's even impossible to make them the same like his painting so it's more just on top yeah. just a little bit so while we kind of sketch it, our brains and eyes also go and analyze them so we are already getting ourselves familiar yes and then and just so Yeah, so very uncomplicated sketch. Uh, check again if you how butter your butterflies um, look, meaning if you know maybe you want to emphasize a bit bigger some main butterfly. Yeah, so also they they're not the same size. Yeah. This. So I'll, I'll leave the sketch uh, for a little bit more. So the first paint we will be using uh, orange. Yes, and you see this very bright uh, parts that we will try also to keep this way, meaning try not to go on top with other paints because the rest is kind of really muted as yes? uh, the colors they're more faded and so if you're finished with sketch you can start putting paint on the palette and we can also put you know at once which ones you have because it will the work with this one will be working lots of parallel yes some paintings you go with one color and then you change so you can put separately the the, the paints but here it's kind of better to put all at once so i'm putting also ochre and sienna yes they usually always also in the set so, those. Okay, imagine. Yeah, I'm also here. This is my. And I was I was mentioning gold color. Um, yeah, I'll try maybe use it not so much because I imagine you don't have it, but. Maybe just also an example so you see how it how it looks. And then brown. And so white color also pretty not, not so much um, because still everything is kind of colorful. It's more of the butterflies where you need the white paint. Yeah, so, so usually we use a lot of white, but this time it's, yes. And then I can have a dot of black. Yes, I use paints gray. Mm. And I will put also the Naples yellow, that is kind of pink, white pink. Yes, you can, of course, get it with um, 
white and red. Yes, just tiny, tiny bit of red and lots of white. So this more or less the set. Brushes, just always the ones you feel comfortable. Uh, of course, tiny, small one in the end for the details of butterflies. And then it's also good, let's say, to have two brushes to work parallel, because one you might use uh, for light tones and the, and the other one you're using for brown. And then you can use them parallel instead of washing, you know, every time and coming back. Yes, yeah? so this is also. And then I have also a bigger one. It's actually good. Um, I will show you in the end of the painting. Um, this moment it's called kind of uniting. So especially since we have lots of lots of spots, there will be the moment when you kind of sit back, take a look at the hole, and then just take some color and kind of unite some spaces. Yeah. So then it's not too too jumpy, too spotty. Yeah. So more or less, this is the setup. Yeah. Feel free to ask. Feel free to um, you know. Um, yeah, I. I'll try maybe also that you can see the palette better. So mixing orange, yes, then um, then I take just you know some amount of yellow. And then I slowly get in with red there. As we know, red is always, it's strong, it's overcoming. So to, to avoid that your mix becomes too dark, and then you have to add more and more yellow, it's always better go slowly, like just tiny bit. Yes, and you will notice that uh, at once your yellow gets uh, darker. Uh, this is, of course, very reddish orange yeah? so in this case you want to go and add a bit more and then we go and put this all where we see this bright So yeah, starting from top, going to the bottom, I uh, imagine it's more comfortable. Yeah, so I've put here on the paper and I see I feel I want a bit more reddish. Yeah. So this one is for all the entire... So um, we will not go entire paper. We are doing now just this brightest spots yeah so of course kind of they can be bigger yeah because later you're gonna put brown on top um but you don't have to um you know color all all the paper right it's um so we don't cover the butterflies exactly i go now now we will be going almost all the time around the butterflies only maybe somewhere, if you see the butterfly has also some dark, some reddish or something, you can put the, the color there. But now we are, yeah, the butterflies will be mostly in the end. So first we start creating all this background. Huh? But uh, we will be also jumping because both background is, um, complicated and butterflies also, lots of details. So this is kind of when you, um, you know, do one part and then to have to have some rest, you jump to, to another. Yeah. So I kind of just follow. So uh, see where, where these bright spots are and approximately I see them. I, I use very little water on my paints. I want 
my pain to sit kind of intense, yes, not too watery. There will be later the moment when um, when we're gonna use the 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 watery uh, brush, yeah. But this is the moment. Yes, of course. If if your brush stops painting, then you add add water. Yes, but not don't don't be kind of very um, let's say feel feel more free. Yes, just it's it's feel a bit more like playing around. Okay, here is butterfly. Here is another. Yes, also because this this light color will be easier to cover with, with the rest. So kind of yes, can also if you've for example your mix is over on the palette, you can let's say change a bit and make it more reddish or the opposite, make it more light. So also to have some some differences in a, in, in these spots that we are making now. So they, they're not all really the same. Yeah. And I also use, so once there is little paint left on my brush, then I kind of, let's say, clean my brush yeah, on, on paper. And like this, I get some, these brush strokes. And, okay. Yes, and for example, also, so the leftovers on the, on the palette, I can add maybe a bit more water, and then it's it's more watery, more transparent, and I can go somewhere around. Yeah. Okay. I have accidentally covered some. Yes, because of course, the sooner we fill in. The whole space, you know, then it's easier. Then you kind of can start detailing. Yes, so it's. Um, yeah, but a bit. So if it's not not to get lost, because once if you just fill it on with orange, then it might feel a bit then. Um, So maybe also you can use the leftovers just to and also of course don't worry if accidentally you go on top of some butterfly as you remember with acrylics we can uh, we can cover yeah if it's dry we can put one color on top other. Uh, and if it's dark and you want to put light on top, then you just first use white, wait till it's dry, and then put your yellow or your pink on top. And uh, um, let's. So the next step will be then just choosing another color and continue filling the background. And then, of course, I, I suggest the ochre light or this gold. Yeah, so um, kind of so kind of check start checking. So I've yeah, this is my let's say ochre. Yeah, and kind of so th this this side, this upper part on the left, this one has this uh, more yellowish part. Huh? So. Yes, and again, I'm using pretty much dry. My brush is dry. And like this, I have these brush strokes, yeah, and they connect.
So if if you will stop worrying about, you know, if if your spots are the same like he has, if um, yeah, but just kind of let let it flow, then it will be easier. Yes, because if you try kind of very precisely follow, okay, here he has orange. I should also put it's um, uh, trying more kind of in general. Um, So here in between the butterflies, then we also can put some yeah, this ochre. Yeah, so here I have I've used the ochre, I have here is sienna. So this is all dark yellowish, yellowish tones. Yeah? And of course, I advise you, let's say, not, not to make dirt yes, on the painting, trying to keep it as, as clean as you can till the end, um, especially once we start adding brown. Yes. So this is why it's a kind of important um, kind of thing, yes, and keep. So if there are some clean parts, uh, of a bright color, we we try not to go on top with the. So. Yes, the gold paint really looks amazing in this painting, or maybe it's also the lamp that is shining, but um, it's really nice. If, if you're also like spending your time in art shop and <laughs> spending your money there, it's, it's a good buy. Mm -hmm. And so even I see that many parts of course here are brown, but still I go kind of almost everywhere. As my aim now is more to fill in the space. Of course, I try to follow a little bit the, the tones where are yellows, where are reds, but. Yes, and when you see that using clean colors, right, it's, um, yeah, it looks nice. It looks, still looks kind of very bright and clean. Yes, but of course, brown will also be essential. Otherwise, it, it will not. Like this. So here I have last one butterfly. So I'll just put white now yes, because I've accidentally covered. So I'm putting enough amount of white and I will set it to, to rest, to dry, and then I can. Very nice. Um, 
So butterflies, they look pretty much light, but still um, you will find also maybe surprisingly how much you have to darken them up, you know, once you uh, progress with your painting. Yes, but still what we do, we will create, let's take some light orange or like pinky. So it might be pinky or, uh, so it's also nice the, the peachy color. So if you have pink, you can add some, some yellow. So let's say, and this is also one of my, I like this mix, yeah, it's warm. And what we do, we create now the base layer for some um, butterflies. Huh? So for example, here, this one on, on the right is very light. Yes, and yeah, let's say these wings of this main big butterfly that is almost on the bottom. So I also put there this peachy and, you know, if you have some leftovers of orange, you can also go. Okay. Yes, and maybe you can take a bit dark, just darker pink. And then I also... So it's creating under layer and then we can start building on top. Yeah, but these colors um, here, you feel free to use more waterish. Yeah, so then the paint is almost as if transparent. Yeah, so I put and I see my pencil and... Uh, so of course this butterfly in the middle that that has these two white spots you can either leave paper white but sometimes also just putting the white paint helps uh, you know it's kind of also to your brain and you can also put it a bit like uh, some amount, you know, so it, it stays like a hill. So, yeah. Tell me. Uh, how did you make the peach color? Yes, the peachy color is so you take, uh, if you have pink, yes, and the pink is this Naples. Magenta? Uh, no, magenta, I don't think. So, if you don't have pink, then you just take lots of white and tiny dot of red, mm -hmm. and then you have to mix it with yellow. Yes, so peachy color is the pink with, uh, with yellow. So it's always nice if you have the pink ready, then mm -hmm. you add a little bit. Yes, and try mix them also slowly because if you put too much yellow, your mix will get just kind of you know yellowish, but you really want it peachy. Um, in the end, peachy is kind of light orange. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, when I took, I have like a, a, a color, an extra color as, um, oh, what's the name? Aso get, uh, Azo yellow deep. And uh -huh. I mixed white and it's peachy. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, then it's, um, what, what we're looking, to put as the base color for butterflies, it's really more light, so kind of mixed with white. Like yes, green, because right? yeah, all, all the background we were not mixing with the white, so it stays bright. But to have this contrast, so butterfly exactly, you can just let's say orange mixed with white. And yes, even the leftovers, what, what you have on palette, you can try and shoot. Yeah. And that was just for one butterfly or for all? I've put, let's let's take a look, yeah? I've put the picture for, for this one here and these two on top. And okay, this one looks 
more reddish, this one, two, three, but still you can kind of put this picture there and then on top you'll be building just darker tones. Yeah, so it's kind of almost all of them. You can put this picture color. It will help you to get rid of the, of the white spots and you kind of, you know, define already, okay, these are the butterflies and maybe somewhere else you still have just empty spots of background. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And, but of course you can play around, let's say, I've used peachy for those. And then, you know, my color mix was over on palette. So then for the next butterfly, maybe I just took a bit more red and then I have it just darker pink. And uh, yeah, so. Yes, but we are not scared to put this way because we know these light colors as yes, we can go go over yeah so for example this this main butterfly um, this one here it has kind of this white in the middle but it has orange goes also a bit around so these orange wings and yeah, but it's kind of just at, at this stage, try not to uh, get into details of butterflies. So maybe it's just detecting its, uh, its color and just putting this base, base color, yes. And sometimes it's, it, it is a temptation to, you know, do the, to do more details at once, uh, but um, then it just get kind of uh, stuck here, yeah? and so. So where else? Where else? Yeah, so for example, now I have some orangey on top, and I can go around also the butterflies. Maybe some orange lines somewhere. Yeah. Yes, but we try not to spend, not to stay too much at this stage because really the background is, is demanding. Yeah. So then I also, this light peachy, I'll do these two flowers on this side. As you can also skip, let's say, the flowers. If you say, ah, I don't see them, I don't understand them there. Maybe because they are not also kind of the, that important. Yes. And for, for these two, Two butterflies at the bottom that are bluish. Then still we also we, we put some uh, pinky color, yes. And then later we will just cover with some purple and blue. So, it, yes. so I um I give you time. Yes, we should come to the stage that we have all our butterflies covered with base color, either uh, light pink or peachy, yellowish. Yes, but with with white in it. Yes, so it's it's lighter and. You can go around your 
backgrounds, if you still have some empty paper left, just feel free to fill in, you know, even with leftovers, what you already have on palette, some yeah, ochre, sienna, and so. Um, yeah. What about the flowers? So yes, these, these two flowers here, I've covered them with, um, with some kind of uh, very light pink. Yes, um, because later we put brown around and then they will start. So I, I didn't leave them white. You can also maybe put, of course, some white paint more on top if needed. Uh, but just two, two circles, one a bit smaller, one a bit bigger here on the, yeah. They will start looking more white once we put all this brown around. Okay. Um, our technique of putting brown will consist of, um, we will create two browns on our palette, darker and lighter. As this is very, common technique you use, let's say, when you paint trees. Yes, you take lighter green and darker green. Of course, you can have more, but at least you, you have two, and then you can go parallel combining them. Yes, um, like this, it doesn't look flat and looks more interesting. So that's what we're gonna do with, uh, with brown. Um, I, always, I suggest, let's say, the brown you have from the tube, yeah, maybe it's probably like burnt umber. Um, so you try how it looks pure on paper, yes? Sometimes brown doesn't really look so dark as you like expect. So, but why I suggest you trying pure film tube? Because then it's easier to repeat, you know, sometimes you have some mix, and then it's over on your palette and maybe not always you can repeat again, but when it's like pure from tube, then it's easy. So one color, we use the brown the way it is. And we just, let's say, choose where, where you know, the dark parts, some, some dark parts on, on the painting and try, yes, and try, let's say, Okay, yeah, I, I put it, it looks very dark. So I say, okay, the pure brown from the tube I use for darkest spots. So the second pile that I'll prepare, I, I wanna have it lighter. Yeah, so let's say this is my brown pure and here I have some uh, sienna. So I just mix it, yeah, mix it with yellow, mix it uh, with sienna. So I'm just getting this lighter. Yeah? And then I will go just parallel um, with, with those two. So I put a little bit of, of this lighter mix. And then I go back again to just a bit darker. And I suggest again, start working with uh, your brush that is more dry. So you see, you also get these brush strokes. And then later you can go uniting when you have more watery, yes? Then you just choose some tone and kind of go around, yeah? And this is also the moment where you can a little bit um, precise the contour of your butterflies. Yes, so maybe this, some line uh, this of, of the body, yeah, so. Yes. I like using dry brush because I feel I have more control with it, exactly because it's not painting everywhere on my paper. Yes, so since it's dry, it's kind of, I go with my, brush but sometimes it's it's not leaving the brush strokes and so then it's um mm -hmm. 
So I suggest now you go more around the butterflies itself. Yes, because it will be it will help us also precise the, the shape of butterflies. Because of course the painting in itself it's very yes. So I use in parallel, I go one touch to this lighter mix where I have brown mixed with uh, sienna and I cover some spots and then I kind of, with the same brush, I don't wash it. I go into the darker and kind of maybe repeat some, some strokes where I just went with lighter brown. And yeah, so it's, and then of course in palette, they get mixed in between as well. Yes. And then, it, and then also, of course, if you go with dry brush, then at some moment your brush just stops painting. And then you, you go into the water, but not too much. You don't dive your brush like completely in the water. Always just kind of, if you don't want to wash your brush, then you just touch the water. Yes, then it helps. Um, and you don't get your brush like all too wet and then it's all floating on your paper. Huh? And in this moment, my brush still, of course, gets more wet. And I use it also. I, I see how it com comports on, um, on my paper. And then I just kind of, okay, if it's floating, then I just fill in, fill in maybe a bigger area you know, with this color that will be, um, more lighter, let's say, more transparent. No? If you like, feel free also to jump around. Yes, you don't have to stick, let's say, with one corner. And uh, sometimes it's, it's even better when you kind of, ah, OK, there I see also dark spot. Let me go in, in this corner yeah, and work a bit somewhere. Because uh, yeah, we, we, we tend to get stuck uh, in one part and then we get tired kind of more, more fr freely around. Yes, yeah? so next time when you go back on your palette to fill up the brush, then you come back to other side of, of painting. Right? Yes. And at this moment, of course, maybe try not overdoing with very dark brown because later it will be easier than come back for the accents. Yes, for these dark um, parts. Because if, if you put now all too dark, then it might be harder. So we continue playing with brownish. Yes, also, for example, if you put color in it, you say, oh no, it's like too dark to, to brownish. Just um, make it maybe a bit more wet and then you can always take it out with some paper towel. Yes, and like if you do it, at the same moment when you've just put, then paper towels takes easily out. Yes, um, this is in the moments when you are um, you now you've darkened more than you wanted. Yes, and again, if you got too stuck on top. Just jump to the bottom of, of painting and also let's say, aha, uh -huh, bottom has more dark. Let me work with, the, with a bit more intense. Yeah? 
And then again, you have less paint on your brush and then you go around where it feels more lighter. Yeah, so I just kind of follow, follow my brush my, when I fill in, when I just grab the color from palette, I know it has lots of paint. Yeah, so I go to the places where I want to sit more. And then I just continue with the brush. I don't go again, but continue to Yes. And um, since we've put these our first layers, you know, very intense colors, so without much water, now you can also feel free, you know, if you have watery color on your brush, you can actually go on top. You know, you don't really have to go around kind of bordering. You, you sit, you know, in one place where you need, but if there is another color next to it, you can go on top. Because if, if your brush is a bit, you know, it's watery, it will just change a little bit the tone of, yeah, but it's, it will look good. It will look more united. Yeah. Uh, but also, then, like, if you manage, you might start noticing which wings of butterflies are kind of uh, blended into the background. So which ones are, uh, yeah? and then you can also kind of feel free and go on top of, of this wing. No, let's say um, so. Like we have this this main butterfly in in the bottom, yeah, with these bright orange wings, and on top of it there is another butterfly. But it's really kind of not, yeah. So I kind of cover a bit those those wings. Yeah, I don't want them to have very strict border. Uh, with, the, with the background, the opposite, the butterfly is kind of inside the, the background. So work a bit more with, with the brown and then to have yeah, some rest to switch, we will go um, and do a little bit of lines on butterflies as yes, with the uh, thin brush and yes, yeah, some black or uh, paints gray. That's <laughs> the color I also promote to buy. I almost don't use black at all, and I use the paints gray instead. And I like it because it doesn't make painting dirty. Yes, the black still it's, um, but paints gray because if you mix it with white or lighten up, it goes more to bluish, and it's um, yeah, I like it so. But um, what we're gonna be doing now with butterflies is. Both black is good because we will be just some tiny lines, just precising the 
and butterflies. Right, I see Claudia left. I was <laughs> so inside. Okay, maybe it was too complicated. No, did she? No, she didn't leave any note. Okay. Yes, this painting is is hard, much harder than it looks. Yes, it's maybe also maybe not. It maybe requires just more time also. Yes, so of course we do the best what we can in our to our session, but I mean, Yeah, I hope you're doing good, Barbara, there. Yes, how is going, Marina? Is it? Well, to be honest, it looks like dirt, but uh, <laughs> I, I'll have some faith. No, really, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, dirt is something that... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. In the end, I will show you, but I'm a bit... Okay, but you remember what we also uh, sometimes do? You put just white color kind of on top, but kind of later, so it's dry, and then you can go with I'm some... Uh, uh, my challenge is uh, I, I wanted to make... I want to make it a bit more organic, like it's not just dirt, but yes. something mixed. And I'm trying to like connect all these, um, uh, how to say, these uh, boundaries between the mm -hmm. colors and maybe it will be better, but I don't know, I still don't see. Okay. Don't know, I see. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, when you will be ready to to get some um, you know break from uniting the areas, let me know. Then we do together a um, bit more detailing for butterflies. Yeah, then it's also good to do some background, jump to butterflies, jump back to background. Then. Um, yes. I want to try something with my background. I want to add a bit of other color because it looks like like in the middle there is a bunch of dirt <laughs> <laughs> on the edges. There is nothing, so I'm trying to like make the edge a little bit more dirty so that it looks like it's supposed to be like this. Mm -hmm. oh, but, uh, <laughs> Hmm. No, <laughs> it's a bit better. If it looks better, um, remember our uh, golden rule. Just leave it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, huh? not to. There is a fine line between. Yes, the line is very fine. It's you very are fine. absolutely right. Yeah. So, okay. Um, 
more nice. satisfied. <laughs> okay, butterflies. Yeah, so let's um, get two two little dots, one one blue, one dark blue, one black. Yeah? And you can either um, yeah, have like the thin brush. So imagine we will be doing lines. Yeah? And, yeah? and so I will start putting a bit more blue on these lower butterflies. Yeah, so let's say this one has here and the corner. That's maybe middle of the body. Yes, and let me just uh, yeah, maybe some somewhere kind of dotting, somewhere a bit. So just um, yeah, imagining you put other colors on top, but it's kind of just to start. Yeah, so some something yeah because of course you will need to add maybe some green there and purple to make then it colorful and then this lower the most lowest butterfly also it has kind of dark dark body um yeah so i can And, and then there is also, I see some blue, but okay, already I'll take, yeah, and these, these two butterflies I did with a bit um, bigger brush, but now I move to like the thin one that does the lines. And you remember that to have the line thin, it's, uh, you should have the paint on your brush, but really watery. So I really create like a puddle on my palette where I'll be going back and forth, yeah, because I have to refill each time. But um, so then now I just go with the, yeah, doing some, um, so we go precising the, the butterflies. Yes. It's also, for example, if you have still some red around and you have the blue kind of can mix some purple and then we can use parallel black, blue and purple. Yeah? But uh, in, in, some, in some parts, the purple looks, looks nicer, yes, instead of uh, black or yeah, so like somewhere like here, this main butterfly, this this lines around, and it goes kind of nicer matching the background. And this is the moment when when you start detailing the butterflies, you realize that they actually not not so light that there is just some little part of the butterfly that has this this light side but a big part of butterfly itself you kind of i keep on i keep on darkening it i keep on darkening you know so then it starts feeling integrated in the in the painting instead of being you know this um separate Spot. Mm -hmm. 
And so once you leave, let's say some uh, some dots, you can always then I come back and maybe with the water repaint, kind of refill. You know, so you do some lines with dry brush, and then you come back and with the like similar tone or with different tone, you feel in between with the with the watery brush, yeah, and then it works. So let's say this main butterfly that has these orange uh, wings at the bottom, yeah, her wings that are on top, it's actually, you know, you, I keep on keep on darkening them. I've put some violet lines, but now I still want to fill in what's what's in between, yes, and so this is the interesting kind of. It feels the butterflies are are light, but you continue darkening them. No? But okay, let's move to another. So this butterfly is on top of this main one with orange wings. So there is this kind of the body, yeah. Then it's kind of easy you you mark bluish. But then again, all the rest of it, yeah, it's kind of maybe just marking the contour. So again, thin brush, watery, and then it allows me to do the lines and I just kind of mark contour, yeah, play around with the... Yeah, so here I, I really kind of started to use a lot of violet. So I'm playing now between the black, uh, brownish violet. So, okay. and of course, if you get black on your brush filled in, you can kind of go around all butterflies and see which ones has, let's say, black body. Yeah, this middle line, and then. Just kind of quickly mark all of them and yeah, because of course once we mark with black the butterfly, then it feels ah okay, yeah, finally something is <laughs> showing out on the on the painting. Otherwise it's it's kind of staying unclear. Yes, and since let's say it's a small brush, then it's of course easier to jump between the colors. Yes, then it's I use let's say blue, then wash it very quickly because very small yeah, amount. So there is also some green, and again, you know, once if, since you have uh, blue, then we can also so blue and yellow. And if if you're lazy to go and search where your green is, then it can be quickly mixed. Mm 
So for example, this on the top, there is butterfly it has this greenish lower wings. And and I see some greenish also all of this bluish butterflies. Mm -hmm. But it's greenish more towards blue. Yeah, so it's And then some many parts. So I imagine you already also have like your palette, you know, full of tones. So use it, use some kind of neutral, dirty, like something a clear brownish color. And then um, if you use it with water, then it's really like a neutral tone that you can go filling up somewhere where you want let's say darken up a bit yes and so if somewhere your butterflies keep jumping out because it's too light then you take just this some already in the mix you know uh, from your palette and kind of Yeah, and then I, here with brown, I put some lines on, on these flowers, like there were just, I don't know, some. And, and then again, I go play around with waterish brown and I'm doing contour or some lines inside the wings and just a little bit more details, like. Um, I probably won't manage to make it, but just a little bit. So of course not leaving butterfly just with one color, still some lines, some stripes. Yeah, I can be even, even with reddish, you can go also um, with the red color. Maybe somewhere on some wings you put just dots also, you know, like butterflies, they have this, it can also look nice. Yes, also using coming back to red can be nice if you used too much brown, then uh, red can help you brighten up a bit the, the story. Yes? So just then kind of close where you have brown parts, you can add a bit bright reddish lines and looks good. And then of course, if you have chance kind of, that's already the moment, a little bit sitting back and looking like the whole image. So what you should put attention to that, which butterflies are uh, 
yeah, jumping out. I use this expression to say that you look at the painting, ah, and then you at once see, okay, this spot needs needs attention. It's I need to work a bit more on something there. So um, you kind of look, spot them, and just quickly correct. So either um, it often happens actually with white spots. So something white you see and uh, and then it's easy you just darken up you know you go just put some of this waterish brown around and it lowers this this white intensity you know? and, or see okay which butterfly maybe looks to do too unworked you know uh, to do a bit more some some detailing like maybe just in comparison with others some just missed you know just some, some part yeah. so yeah and of course now detailing the butterflies we can do a lot um but um you know before you get Tired completely. I will encourage encourage you again, um, kind of take uh, maybe mix new brownish, yeah, maybe in some clean area of your palette, so to avoid the dirt. Maybe even not brownish. Maybe let's say um, the yeah burnt sienna, so dark sienna, something, and go a little bit uniting. Yes, yeah, see which which areas maybe are too separate. Um, where maybe I want to put a bit darkened accent. Yes. But I mean, of course, it's good if you've managed to keep your your work, yeah, not not too dark. Because let's say if it's all too dark, um, since it's acrylics, of course it's let's say re repair, you can repair, yeah, but then it will just need some more time because then you have light, you need to lighten up, need to put, let's say, white paint or, yeah, and then kind of go, go again. Yeah. So, but now with, with dark brown, you can go maybe around some particular, um, uh, butterflies, maybe just also emphasizing the borders of butterflies again, somewhere. Yeah. Um. Uh, also, feel free, uh, yes, to send me your. Um, so, uh, Barbara, you probably don't know. We use also WhatsApp chat where we share, of course, end results and but also during the lesson. If you, if you feel you need help, then of course, with a quick photo and send in WhatsApp and then I can take a look. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so maybe also maybe the bottom of the painting needs a bit more brown. Yeah, it looks a bit more like in, in his original, it looks more dark, but this is already, you can decide, you can take a look and say, oh, maybe I have it generally all too dark, then I will leave this part lighter, even if in original artwork, it's not this way. Huh? So. And so also going kind of again with the 
again, dry brush, intense color, and already choosing, putting some, some accents and And for example, with dry, dry brush, I, I feel for me it works easier because even now when I just add a little bit more water, then it all starts kind of floating. So, but it's... Yeah, curious. I think this painting, like you can repeat, if you repeat other times, it will always, <laughs> you will have different. Yeah, it's very hard to repeat the same way you, you had it. So I will send you mine, Jenny. Yes, of course. I'm very curious yes, to see. Let's, let's take a look what. Oh my God. <laughs> it's so crazy. But okay. Don't worry. If if you want, I can bring you this uh, <laughs> painting. Of... Mm. Mm. Oh, maybe it's not so bad. Not so bad. Not so bad. Yeah. Uh huh. Phew. Not bad at all, Marina. I must say. <laughs> all right. So Barbara, if you wanna, um, yeah, um, here Marina sent nice, very nice. Um, I suggest we work a little bit on these two brown lines at the bottom. Yes, mm -hmm. let's maybe just try somehow blend them out. I try. <laughs> <You> try. <laughs> how, how, like with water or, because I tried oh, everything. Yeah. Uh, if, if this part, if this area is dry, you can actually go with, uh, let's say red. Yes. Mm -hmm. and. But you don't, you go just kind of trying to do the borders, you know, or um, or see, you know, if even mm -hmm. covering, maybe if you start the borders, then it feels to also jumping inside the browns and, but mm -hmm. just kind of, yeah, unite. So either make this red also darker, yeah, why not? It also might kind of this uh, spot, although of course it looks nice, yeah, this, this, um, clean area of of this red yes those areas of course uh, might uh, but nice marina yeah <laughs> no you you are improving your skills because it's complicated and um yeah we have like we try also we paint quickly you know because yeah. because of the time but no not bad at all very i like it. of course very curious how barbara does because uh, I know she told me she she paints, so I'm I'm sure she has also. Wow, this is definitely for the wall. Huh? So with with some nice, imagine even maybe some red frame if one can find. And then this is um... okay. I think, yeah. mm -hmm. I think I will. I have like the collection of what we do in our class or uh, in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And actually, it looks good. Like after the class, I always feel like, <laughs> bad. but then after like a few weeks, I <laughs> the wall and it looks okay. Yeah, it's um, this is why one you one should put yeah the works on the wall because it changes. It really changes the mm -hmm. this this feeling. So um, I will give you one more suggestion, but then you decide if you want to do or not. So this brown line. Yes, feels a little bit kind of, 
yeah like this long brown worm something yeah mm -hmm. I don't know if if you can just again maybe with a bit more brownish just kind of fade it out yeah so yeah. Uh, just connect a bit more connection between this yellow and brown. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it depends. Maybe it's just the way I see, feel it. Yes, because of mm -hmm. course there is danger like to darken up because your yellow part here is also good. Yes, all these clean areas, of course, try to, to save. Yeah? And um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no, no, but I see I'm, I'm now doing it. Now it's dry, it's easier because yes. it was wet mm -hmm. before and I tried to mix when I was saying it was dirty I was trying to <laughs> but Marina it's um you, <laughs> you know that you have to wait till it's dry <laughs> <laughs> okay Barbara um she she says that here is not worth showing come on I, I'm <laughs> on a different type of brush uh to blend I will enjoy watching and uh, paying attention. Then start all right. Okay, Barbara, of course. Yes, feel, um, thanks for your message. Feel free to do uh, the way it yeah, um, feels comfortable. Yes, there will be recording. So of course you can watch again. And, but of course we like two hours and I feel, you know, I'm rushing and, and so I imagine it's uh, not, not easy at all. Um, so let's see, Marina. I try to blend a little, but um, yeah, you you say about the the lower part. Yeah? No, no, both, both. I I did both, both actually. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult. <laughs> this dirt uh, <laughs> upstairs is really uh, really strong, and it's difficult to blend. Um, maybe I have to wait until it dries again, and then. Okay, yeah, but it can be also the thing, just like kind of trying to to be a bit more brave with the brown mm -hmm. yes and um but of course like so again the 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 paper is dry the paint on the paper is dry and you go also with the dry brush yes pretty mm -hmm. much and then but you go wider you know don't try to go just like mm -hmm. thin line try to go like mm -hmm. more brave okay you know mm -hmm. this area under the Mm -hmm. the butterfly in kind of uniting the the bigger area yes and since it's the dry brush it will you know do these brush strokes so it will not kind of cover too um too much uh, and, yes so just because there was an um because you sent me the second picture and telling me, okay, I've modified, but I almost see no little difference. So I suggest you went like really just correcting a long thin line. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But I suggest kind of just, just move more, like more brush, braver around something mm -hmm. like this. Yeah? And um, see. Okay. Nice, but... But I'm proud, Marina. We did. Yeah, we Thank did a good job. <laughs> yes. And of course, I'm very thankful to Barbara because honestly, I didn't know this painter. So it was it's it's a really discovery for me. And yes. And of course, his yeah, I of course I Googled and his stage of um his dark period. Because um, as I understand from his biography, yeah, the childhood was not so maybe happy. He was a bit alone without, and like, so all these feelings and emotions. And then something changed and he started to use such a bright color. So imagine from painting just some black and very depressive, he, he changes to these bright, bright colors the topic still stays somewhat like irreal, yeah, some surrealism, but um, yeah. I'll take also tape off from mine. Taking tape is <laughs> a nice, nice part. Get the frame. I still haven't bought the tape. <laughs> I need to buy. 
Okay, Maureen, I think I'll have to bring some tape. <laughs> I might when I wrong one. And if I don't buy, I just have nothing. <laughs> there is no supply of um, tape in Germany. <laughs> um, yes, so. Yeah, of course I can. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm still here. I'm I have time. So of course, um, yeah, Marina, and we can we can still correct if you want. And yes, Barbara, of course, also feel free to maybe ask and discuss what what you think went wrong with your one. And yeah, blending. I can I can uh, talk a bit about blending. There is actually some specific technique you use if you want you know, to blend. Um, and the best, of course, is you try when you paint sky, yeah, and you want to paint the sunset sky that usually goes, you know, this from purple, bluish, and going down to, to this orangey and, and yellow. So you have to create this gradation. And for blending, the um, important is to have enough paint so don't have like the layer too thin, yes? So st still you have some paint that you can move and it, it can't be uh, too watery, yes? So you have to control how much water you have, then it will be blending nicely. And um, then it's also um, when you go in one, from one color inside another, so it's more advisable that let's say, if I do the sky, I put first purple um, and blue and then clean well my brush. So it has, you know, nothing, it's very clean. And then I go, let's say with orange, with reddish inside. So with light, I go inside dark, then it's easier because of course, when you blend, yeah, the blue tends to overcome yeah? and then let's say it becomes all bluish. So it's, it's again, it's experimenting. In, in, in our painting of today, yes, we don't have these big areas like sky where we have to do this all, uh, yeah, lots of brush movements nicely. Um, here, what I was, you know, kind of suggesting, so we created these different separated spots. Yes, we started with this bright orange, then we did some spots of yellow. Um, and then kind of with these watery acrylics, you can fill, fill in, you know, the empty spots in between. And then you kind of go with second layer with this brownish in, in parallel also uniting, you know, some, some connections. So this is, um, uh, but um, yeah, I hope, uh, <laughs> still, I hope you, you know, you found useful painting today and, um, of course, very welcome to join again. Give some other interesting suggestion for for what we can paint. Yes, um, I'm not sure if next Saturday. Yes, I'm still in doubt as as I'll be traveling. Uh, maybe I will take computer with me and we can paint. If not, then we will skip one Saturday and. Um, paint some, some famous artwork uh, and, and but we will see. Um, and so you will let us know about uh, Hamburg. I will, I will um, no, about Hamburg, I will, I will write you separately, Marina, <laughs> yes, because it's just I'll be in Berlin and then depends mm -hmm. how, how the things go there. I take the bus and I go to Hamburg. So, but probably on, on Sunday morning, Mm -hmm. Yes, because then my friend said, okay, I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll stop recording here because...